Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who never shows death say hurts pets as fast as many as me tax. I'm East Validity. Welcome. And uh, let's go back to Yemen. In uh, most of the videos I've talked about Yemen, uh, I've been one of those who are skeptical that there's really any kind of a proxy war going on between Iran and Saudi Arabia. And this is how the, uh, the mainstream media wants to characterize it. This is how the United States wants to characterize it. And this is how Saudi Arabia especially wants to characterize it. But um, everything I saw pointed to the fact that there really isn't much connection between uh, Iran and uh, the Houthis or anything going on in Yemen. Um, particularly because if you look a little closer, you find out that the, the Zadia is a form of Islam followed by these Yemeni tribesmen, is a legacy religion, is the oldest and most traditional of Shia sects, and apparently has no connection whatsoever, uh, really, between uh, their brand of uh, Shia Islam and uh, the, what is practiced in Iran and Iraq, and uh, so there is really no affinity, and uh, there also is no allegiance of uh, these uh, Zaydis scholars and imams to anyone in Iran. Uh, the connection has been made previously because uh, certain uh, members of the uh, Yemeni government, including the previous uh, president Saleh, or actually now the <laughs> previous president to the previous president of Yemen. Uh, uh, Saleh uh, had visited Iran, but it's not, not uncommon for um, uh, these uh, global leaders uh, to mingle amongst themselves and certainly not out of uh, character at all for somebody from uh, Yemen uh, to be visiting somebody in Iran. But, uh, and, then the, and the religion apparently is stronger among the priests and scholars than amongst the tribesmen, uh, tribesmen who are doing the bulk of the fighting. It's more part of their uh, identity than anything else, and, and they're from the mountains of uh, North Yemen. So, so to get back to the original idea, um, there's been certain arms that have made their way to Yemen, but uh, uh, of course with the flood of arms around that region, everything coming out of Libya, everything filtering uh, through uh, because of the Syrian war and everything else, um, it's pretty much hard to say where a lot of weapons are are coming and going to, but uh, we have the situation in Yemen uh, that's now being used once again as a, uh, uh, a battleground uh, for Saudi Arabia's goals and uh, doesn't really have as much to do with this uh, much uh, uh, touted Sunni-Shia divide and this proxy war between uh, Iran and Saudi Arabia. There just is no proxy war between Saudi Arabia in uh, Iran there, although interestingly enough, uh, jo Joost Hilterman of the International Crisis Group put it this way, he said that, quote, the Iranians are just brilliant, they play no role whatsoever in Yemen, but they get all the credit, unquote. And uh, we also have quotes from uh, um, Alain Chouet, who is a senior French intelligence analyst, and he said, quote, you've never seen in the past any evidence of uh, Iranian support to the Yemeni Shias because there was none, unquote. Uh, he said the, the Zaydis are very different and far from uh, Iranian mullah's orthodoxy in their beliefs. Um, and he's, he goes on to say, too, that the Iranians preferred uh, President Saleh, who had ruled for 30 years and had an uneasy relationship with Saudi Arabia, unquote. Um, so we have a number of uh, key figures who uh, support the idea that there really is no connection really between Iran and uh, and Yemen. And uh, there's even uh, ridiculous stories coming out uh, right now. Uh, supposedly a congressional committee member claimed that there was Iranians who were leading attacks uh, by the Houthis. And uh, so we're seeing this uh, propaganda war get ramped up by the United States and Saudi Arabia to try and paint it um, as uh, more evidence. So pretty soon we're going to have Lindsey Graham's and the like uh, adding uh, the capital of uh, Yemen to the list of uh, Iranian uh, co uh, 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 conquerors, conquered territories in, in the region. And in fact, our old buddy Netanyahu has uh, come out of the, the dark corners and said that uh, 
Quote, after the Beirut-Damascus-Baghdad axis, Iran is conducting a pincher movement to the south to conquer the entire Middle East. Uh, that's quite a claim. So he's saying that they, they've already conquered Beirut, Damascus, and Baghdad. And that's uh, pretty interesting that he, he would say that, that Iran has conquered Damascus uh, when we have uh, ISIS and uh, Al-Qaeda overrunning the country. And uh, we also have the United States bombing them to keep uh, that government in power in Damascus, uh, the, the Assad government. And, of course, Baghdad, uh, Iran, Iran is involved there uh, and is actually helping the United States uh, support, theoretically salvage that situation there. So, and, and, the, and the idea that uh, somehow Iran controls Lebanon uh, because of the Hezbollah presence, uh, these are all uh, interesting claims, uh, but all at least somewhat debatable. But uh, but to say that uh, Iran has shown that they're, they're going to conquer the entire Middle East is uh, pretty laughable. And then he goes on to say that the, the Iran, uh, Lausanne, Yemen axis is very dangerous to humanity. It must be stopped. So here we, here we get another warning from Netanyahu about the dangers to all humanity uh, when it's barely even a security risk for Israel, but somehow... Uh, any implied threat, uh, any imagined threat, are all dangerous to humanity. But uh, interesting that he would include Iran, Yemen, and uh, Lausanne in that, uh, because the Lausanne is the uh, P5 plus 1. The United States, UK, France, Russia, China, and Germany, all who are negotiating this um, Iran deal. So now, uh, basically, anybody who is against uh, uh, Netanyahu, anybody that's against uh, the Iran uh, who is against bombing Iran, uh, is now against Israel as part of this uh, terrorist axis of Iran, Yemen, and now the U.S., U.K., France, Russia, China, China and Germany. But you were used to this kind of hyperbole from Netanyahu, but once again it shows that uh, all the political opportunists are lining up, including Netanyahu, to take advantage of this situation in Yemen and paint it as a, a proxy war that is not. So clearly uh, we call bullshit on that. And, uh, and and then when you get into uh, some of the other aspects, I've, I've talked a lot about uh, some of the background material and peripherals in my last couple of videos about um, the uh, what's happening in, in Yemen. But uh, now we have, uh, once again, uh, more details about not only do we have uh, the Saudi uh, intervention uh, overtly now with this, uh, this these airstrikes, but also uh, more insidious over the years, uh, influencing events in in uh, Yemen, we also have a familiar U.S. pattern, also of uh, destabilizing. So, uh, so, so what we have is uh, uh, something that's actually akin to things that we've seen over and over again. The same blueprint of destabilization, that even that we see in the Ukraine. We have all these U.S. NGOs in there uh, fomenting, in uh, Saudi Arabia even backing the uh, so-called Arab Spring that happened there and toppled uh, Saleh. And, and then we have the U.S. Uh, also in there supporting these southern separatists. Um, and now we find the Houthis moving south uh, to fight them as well as Al-Qaeda. And um, But part of this uh, could end up being uh, Yemen uh, once again being uh, repartitioned uh, into uh, uh, two or three uh, different countries. So we're going to see this balkanization that we see all over that region and all over uh, in in uh, U.S. Uh, global uh, plans for de destabilization of all these different countries and regions. And um, so we can see uh, the country broken up and creating a more, uh, 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 more advantageous strategic position for both Saudi Arabia and the United States. And I also want to mention that, uh, uh, last but not least, um, a couple other interesting factoids that came out about Yemen. Apparently, the uh, the Yemenese government have 130 fighters, so we have 130 fighters that are up for grabs. Um, I would imagine uh, between different groups in Yemen, and we also have 600 surface-to-air missiles that are now uh, loose. So uh, we could see some pretty uh, dramatic uh, warfare in uh, whatever unfolds here in Yemen. We're also finding out, of course, that. Uh, for the time being, at least, there's no plan uh, for 
a ground invasion of Yemen, uh, which is surprising. Uh, there was quite quite a lot of specific details that were floating floating around about Egyptian troops already offshore, etc., and uh, troops anywhere ranging from 40,000 to 150,000. Uh, all the dust has settled, and we're seeing the truth of the matter that uh, Saudi Arabia is going to un, un, uh, unusually, uh, apparently, going to uh, use the U.S. Uh, model and uh, try and win this war. Uh, basically using uh, airstrikes, um, but we also uh, found out that they're planning on uh, doing airstrikes there for anywhere from one to six months. So uh, once again, we have a, a long-term conflict, and uh, we should, we'll have to see what kind of goals can be reached with strictly um, uh, airstrikes. And uh, and then we also have a claim of Israeli fighters uh, in Yemen, but uh, the source. Uh, all the sources seem to reference back to one article that was uh, put uh, was posted by uh, uh, an Iranian source, and therefore, uh, for better or worse, is not necessarily reputable. So I'm not going to do any story on Israeli fighters as of yet. Uh, it would be a very very dramatic uh, um, step in this war if that were true, um, but I just don't think it is. So uh, so anyway, there we have it. Uh, upgrade. Uh, on uh, some of my uh, other Yemeni videos discussing the fact that there really is no proxy war. Uh, this is all another propaganda war. It's another uh, um, blueprint um, that we've seen before that's been used by Israel, Saudi Arabia, the United States, and different countries through that region and uh, all over the globe. And, um, and uh, we're going to see another uh, uh, relatively low-level con conflict simmering there, but uh, at least for the time being, uh, Ron has nothing to do with it. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?